Niall, you've just become chairman of the Association of Visitor Experiences and Attractions. Tell us a little about that. Yeah, Owen, it's something that I'm immensely proud of to become the chairman of Avia. And it's an organisation that's only two years in existence, so we're just heading into our third year. Um, and I've taken on the, the mantle from, from the great Paul Carty of Guinness. Big, big shoes to fill. Absolutely, yeah. 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 And um, Paul and the board have done a tremendous amount of work over the last two years in, um, in setting up the organisation, firstly. Um, and position, positioning us, um, I suppose rightfully so, in, in the heart of the tourism sector. Avia really is it's the, it's the association of all visitor experiences and attractions. So we currently have about nine, just over 90 members and who employ over 4,000 people uh, spread all over the country and it's, it's very much an all-island body as well. So we have everybody from Titanic in, in Belfast to, uh, to Westward House and to Bunratty Castle. Yeah. Um, and in many ways, uh, people come to Ireland for the things to see and do rather than for a bed to sleep in or you know, other things. It's actual cultural experiences and visitor attractions. It is, it is. I look at this, that's, that, that, that point itself is something that uh, certainly AVI and its members get quite passionate about. That, you know, it is very much about the experiences. It is about the attractions. It is about, obviously, the landscape as well. Um, so we see ourselves really as a key enabler for the tourism sector in totality, that we've got the right products Great. to provide visitors uh, reasons to come to Ireland. And your term as chairman, I think, is for two years. Any particular aspirations during those two years? What I would like to do really is, is to grow on the great foundations we have as an organisation and to really amplify our voice within the tourism sector um, and really contribute positively to the ongoing debate in relation to where tourism should be investing money and support, particularly from the government. Very good. You're of course MD of Shannon Heritage. I think there's a portfolio of seven? We've eight different days. Eight, days, excuse me. Yeah, yeah. Eight, and um, quite a few in the Midwest, obviously, where it all started, but increasingly around Ireland. Yeah, so we've four in, t in totality in Dublin now. Um, recently just added the, the Casino Modern Railway Museum in Mal Malahide, which is due to open in the coming months. Um, so we've expanded our portfolio quite a lot over the last um, three or four years. Um, but we really see ourselves um, developing out our core assets here, particularly here at Bunratty Castle in the next couple, couple of years. And we've engaged with Fall Charlie in, in respect of the capital investment programme that we would like to invest in Bunratty and really bring Bunratty back into the top 10 attractions in Ireland. We're currently at number 17, I think it is. So we would like to bring us back into the fold Great. in respect of the iconic attractions. Throughout the and, and what are the specific plans for Bunratty? So effectively, there's a couple of facets to that potential plan um, if, it's, if we're successful. And I suppose, first thing is to future-proof the site. Um, so the infrastructure here currently is, is, is closing in on capacity in respect of things like car park and even the, the gateways that we have within the park itself. So we'd like to invest in the core infrastructure in order to future-proof um, the park. And obviously, we want to invest quite heavily in the visitor experience. So um, whether that's in respect of the interpretation of the, the folk houses and the castle, and maybe bring in some new dimensions to that and, and trying to get the balance right between historical accuracy, technology and storytelling and it's trying to just weave that all together in a plan that will meet consumer needs. Great. And 2019, it's been a challenging enough season for Irish tourism. How has it been for the Shannon Heritage sites? It has, yeah. You know, without a doubt, it's been a very challenging year, I think. Um, it's well documented that 2018 for tourism in totality was a very successful year, so obviously uh, off, off the back of a good year, 2019 was certainly very challenging and I think for us as a company, given our portfolio stretches from the Wild Atlantic Way uh, to Dublin, um, we've seen um, complexities within that then depending on the country of origin of a visitor and various uh, geopolitical issues that might have impacted us. So for example, Brexit would have impacted our Dublin attractions quite significantly, whereas not so much in the Wild Atlantic Way. Um, whereas we would have been impacted here more so because of the likes of the Max Boeing jet and yeah. the Norwegian flights which were uh, cancelled going to Shannon Airport. Mm -hmm. That would have had a, a massive impact on our performance in the likes of Bunratty Castle and King John's Castle. Yeah. Yeah. Overall we're slightly down, uh, slightly down on visitor numbers. Um, we're down more significantly in the likes of Bunratty and the Wild Atlantic Way attractions whereas Dublin has seen some modest growth. Um, so that's, that's been good in, in the sense of balancing our, our P&L ultimately, but uh, it's been a challenging year certainly. Um, we have seen a dip in visitor numbers, um, but we're very confident that in, 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 uh, as we move into 2020 that we've got enough ammunition to, to drive back into growth again. Great. And Shannon Heritage, is, it, it's part of the wider Shannon group, isn't it? What, what, what does that mean? Yeah, that's correct. So uh, part of the Shannon group, uh, which effectively uh, includes Shannon Airport, um, Shannon Heritage and a commercial property business, Shannon Commercial Properties. Um, and that's a really, really important part of who we are. Um, Shannon Group ultimately is, is the key 
enabler in the west of Ireland for economic uh, growth and whether that's through FDI or, or obviously tourism. Um, there's a symbiotic relationship between Shannon Airport's performance and our own. So for example, as, as I mentioned earlier, the, the issues with the Max Jet uh, and Norwegian Airlines this year would have impacted our performance here. So yeah. a strong so, and so growing Shannon Airport means that uh, Shannon Heritage will also grow and, and be strong. Exactly, back. because because direct air access right into the Midwest obviously helps all your business. Hugely, business. hugely. And we are quite dependent. A third of our business depends on North American visitors uh, in this region. And, and effectively, they are all coming through Shannon Airport. So um, I suppose having policies in place that support Shannon Airport will um, also, uh, support Shannon Heritage's growth yeah. in, in, in and, the coming years. And is Shannon Heritage just a standalone, if you like, profit and loss? Do you have to kind of cover your costs and, and, and sort of, you know, invest in your own properties each year? Yeah, absolutely. We're, we're a commercial semi state. We have a standalone PL. We don't get any government subvention in, in respect of funds. Uh, so, yeah, it, it's very much we have to, we have to um, pay our own way, it's like, like any budget. So, um, that obviously that's good pressure to have. You know, we, we need to drive visitor numbers. We need to invest in the right places um, and in the right products that are that are going to effectively drive visitor numbers and, and, and improve our PL. Very good. And what's your view of Irish tourism's future, if you like? I mean, I, we are in choppy choppier waters, if you like, at, at the moment, as you've just said, Brexit, competitiveness, costs of business, and so on. But they won't last forever. Looking forward, say two, three, four, five years, where do you think Irish tourism is going? Yeah, I, I think despite the obvious challenges that exist uh, in 2019 and, and will arguably continue into 2020, and there's quite a bit of uncertainty about next year's performance, I think it, we still need to be, be positive. You know, as I said, 2018 was a record year for tourism in Ireland, so we are coming off quite a high base. Um, and look, at, in fairness, the likes of Fallage Ireland through the Tasty Island initiative, there's a lot of new campaigns and, and new initiatives including the capital grant schemes um, that Falls Ireland have instigated which are going to improve the product across the totality of Ireland. So I think we have to be positive and we have to continue to strive for more investment in tourism. I think a, a pro-tourism approach from, from the government would absolutely help in that regard. Um, and the more investment that goes into tourism, I don't see any reason why we can't compete internationally to win more tourists for Ireland, like Tourism Ireland have done successfully for the last number of years. Super. Thanks so much, Niall. You're welcome.